Hey everyone, Pichi Al here, and we're on our way to go into my friend Lon's house, the guy we all know by, by Big SoCal Euro. So we're gonna go to his house, we're gonna be fixing his Mark IV, so let's, go, let's get going, because this is Pichi Al's garage. Yeah. So we're here at Lon's house, and here's Lon. And this is the Mark IV in question. This is a 337 Mark IV GTI. And the issue with this car is that the shift linkage has broken. And it's not broken from the engine bay, it's actually broken from the shift box. So if you guys ever done a shift box or shift linkage before, it is a big pain in the booty to do. So we're not gonna do it on the street, that's for dang sure. We're gonna be able to do, we're gonna do this on his driveway. We just gotta put, uh, push one of those cars out and we're gonna push this one up the hill in reverse and get it going. So let's get to work. This is Pinchy House Garage. So give you guys a quick rundown of what we've been doing. So we have to we have to remove the downpipe. Um, so we're soaking them right now with um, with the pretty much a WD right now. Um, the next step is the hardest part down here is the sleeve. Uh, since this car has been sitting for a while underneath a sprinkler, Russ is really strong with this guy right here. Uh, this is the sleeve right here. So we have to unbolt this. We have to take off this uh, support. Uh, this allows the um, pretty much the exhaust to hang down. While that's hanging, we'll be able to take this all off and then be able to take this uh, belly pan or the heat shield off. And this will give us access pretty much to the shift box. Um, so we can unbolt it and pull everything out. Unfortunately, you have to take all this off to get to the uh, to get to the um, the two bolts underneath um, the shift box, so you can actually pull the box out, and then we're going to be able to rebuild it from there. Um, here is what we call the OBD2 um, a hanger box. They're held together with two 10 millimeter bolts. Take that out. Unplug the two OBD2 cables. Uh, they are very specific, so there's no wrong way to reinstall them, just so you guys know. Um, just in this project, we're not going to unbolt the o, uh, the O2 sensors, so don't worry about that. There's two of them, one of the uh, pre-cat, and then, actually this car is a little different, but <laughs> there's a pre, and then here's the one right before the cat. Um, so there you go. Uh, let's see here. So there are four bolts underneath the downpipe for the stock downpipe. Two right here for the sleeve. And then these little guys are annoying. Uh, to take these off, you got a couple ways of doing this. Um, you can get a flathead screwdriver and cram it right here in the corner and kind of like thread it off to not damage these. You don't want to damage these. That's the big thing. Damaging them is a big deal because if you damage them, um, uh, they're hard to put back on and they won't hold your heat shield in place. So we're gonna get to work right now to get the, the two um, sleeve bolts right now off because these are the easiest ones to get to. Then we're gonna work on the four downpipe bolts uh, right afterwards. Um, these are going to snap off 100%. They're gonna break um, just because you can see the, the amount of rust on here is ridiculous. So uh, we gotta get ready to get new um, hangers and sleeve on here to hold this spot in place. Uh, hold that stuff back in place when we get to it um, The brace right here for the exhaust is a 13 millimeter There's a decent amount of these bolts on here. Just so you guys know um, That hold the whole entire uh, Brace for the exhaust for the rear half of the exhaust All right, So 
this is a first for me guys i've never removed a downpipe on a mark four where the bolts didn't snap so this is actually pretty cool uh so we removed the uh four bolts on the downpipe they're 17 millimeters uh the one thing you guys got to understand is make sure you have a shorter uh 3 8 ratchet anything bigger uh, then this guy right here, this is kind of a, a long 3 h ratchet. Uh, we got to cut it about two more or get a ratchet about two, three inches shorter than this. Uh, because if you don't, you're not going to have the arm room underneath the car to remove it. Um, <clears throat> so the downpipe is now all loosey-goosey. You guys can see here. It's... removed so the next step here is we're gonna put the sleeve right here on the downpipe we have to cut that cut them off this 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 thing's done so we're gonna get a cutting wheel and cut right here down the slit right down the middle and then the bolts will come off and then we're gonna have to pry this open with the flathead to pull the sleeve off and then the next step will be to take off this brace um, to get the downpipe uh, out and uh, removed and out of the way and we'll show you guys what to do next after that so since we cut the um, exhaust flange here, or yeah, the, the little flange this, we cut them in half, uh, bent them, pried them open with the flathead screwdriver. Get a big flathead screwdriver. Don't get a little boring one. Um, pry them open as much as you can. This is the sleeve right here. So depending on how rusty it is, guys, um, you might have to jam a flathead screwdriver right into here and jam it in and pry it open so you can slide the sleeve um, as much as you can. Um, the next step here, once we get that and pull the downpipe out, uh, before we do that, right down here, here's the um, O2 sensor cover, two 10 millimeters. Take this off, unplug the two O2 sensor wires, and then you're gonna pull the downpipe uh, right here. Pull it out through here slowly. Uh, just be careful not to damage the wires. Uh, damaging the wires means you're gonna buy new O2 sensors. Um, do not pull the O2 sensors out because then you actually have a risk of dropping them and damaging the tips of the O2 sensor and then you got to buy a new O2 sensors anyways. All right, we'll show you guys in just a second and what to do next. All right, so we're done here. Again, remove the two 10 millimeter little plastic nuts. Be careful, guys. Don't lose these. These are pretty important. <laughs> so now we take the cover off and this is your OBD2 port, right? Uh, OBD, I'm sorry. O2 sensors, uh, you got your wide band and your sing, uh, standard band here. Um, these pop right out, just like that. And then pull the clips, just like this. All right, um, next step from here is pulling these guys off. These just pop out of the little uh, trays here, guys. Just take your time and you'll see the exhaust is just this is it uh, since the downpipe is now unbolted and we finally got the sleeve sleeve off already um, right here this whole thing will just drop and come out and this will give us access to the uh, the heat shield to get access to the actual shift box underneath So this goes down and then you might have to like just again like and dangle. Oh, I dropped you guys. Hold on. Uh, sorry about that. There we go. You got like turn it and then that's it. That's your downpipe removed. Um, so now the actual uh, shift box sits underneath this tray, or not tray, this heat shield. Um, so um, you need a flathead screwdriver. Hey, Lon, do you got a smaller flathead? I'm a flathead. Okay, you have one? Uh, yes. Please. We're going to see. We're going to try to get away with now removing the, uh, the actual exhaust brace back here. And try to just do it from here um if not we'll have to remove the troll tray he went on a sojourn <laughs> <laughs> see if this, will this one do yeah, yeah that'll work okay 
<laughs> yeah, I just so what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm pulling back these little aluminum tabs to get access to the actual uh, retaining clips here. Um, and depending on how rusty these things are, you might not be able to do these as easy. Um, So try to turn it by hand. Um, do not, I repeat, do not try to um, just pry them off because you're gonna bend them and damage the clips and then you're gonna be worse off than you were before. And see if it'll let you thread them off. Sometimes it'll let you, sometimes it might not, but let's see, see if we get lucky. All right, cool. So this right here is what we're talking about. These little, these clips are super annoying uh, when removing them because you can pry them off, but what happens is that these little pieces in the middle, the little the little starfish here, will um, bend in the wrong direction, and you can't reuse them. They can't clip on nicely anymore and retain these. So once that's off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bend this clip, this one just a little bit so you can access the the bottom one just like that um, you have one two three four I believe in total um, that hold this whole entire heat shield uh, underneath your shift box so we're gonna get these taken care of and then we're gonna show you guys what to do next all right so we got all the four of the little uh, uh, these guys I don't even know the term for them I guess these weird things. We got all four of them off. Uh, we're gonna pull these tabs back like I explained to you guys before. These four tabs have to come off, uh, bend them back a little bit, and then just with as much finesse as you guys can, be careful with these, because these can get damaged. It's such thin aluminum. Um, and they, they like to damage really, really easily. They bend very, very easily. Um, and see if this will let us. So you're gonna pull down, pull forward towards the front of the car, pull the shield out like that, guys. Okay, thank you. All right, so now this is the tricky part, and this is why I explained to you I hate doing these oh so much. Um, but he loves me. But I love him, yes. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick over here this is the shift box okay so this box has two bolts it's so stupid right there they're upside down i don't know why volkswagen designed it this way what's funny mark twos mark threes mark fours i don't even know if mark ones have it this way but all have these two bolts underneath the exhaust it's so stupid um but you get those two bolts you need a, a i'd recommend getting like a ratcheting wrench uh, that way you can just get in there and boop, 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 and then you'll be able to push down and pull out uh, at an angle. Uh, get those two. We're going to show you guys how to um, get the top of the shift box ready to, for removal. We're going to need to go dismantle the shift linkage on this side as well, so we'll show you guys that as well. So here's your shift linkage. On these cars, they're annoying, but they're super, super simple. Um, since we're not going to take off the ends, we're just going to take off the clips. this is the clip right here that you need if you got strong enough fingertips uh pry this up and then slide it out and then that's one you only there's two of them in total that you need to worry about number two let's see if you guys can see this here but this is the linkage that you need to slide out up and out just like that um we need to unbolt it from back there uh we might not I'm going to see if I can um, take off the ends because we actually have to take off the ends off of these two. Let's see if we can get our way, uh, get away with that. All right, so this part, you guys should already know how to pop one of these off. That's not, not much special. But there's a foam that goes inside here. Pretty much just push it, uh, squeeze it as hard as you can, pull up slowly, 
and work your way out so you can take the whole entire foam insert out. We're going to try to do this without taking apart the entire center console because that's a lot more work. Um, so once we drop the box, you're going to have to put this down sideways so I can feed through. But you'll see here, there's a bolt there and that bolt over there in the left corner. Those two actually hold the shift box in place. Uh, everything else doesn't really matter. Uh, so those two bolts hold the shift box and the one underneath the exhaust uh, that we showed you, these two, hold the shift box. So those are 13 millimeters. So we have to go at an angle using pretty much a wobble extension. Uh, that should get us to get that out of there. So we're going to give it a try and see if we are successful. All right, so this is a six-speed transmission, guys. So just remember uh, to remove the, uh, the shift linkage. It's uh, two 13s and on the top. And then there's another 13 down below at an angle. Uh, the five speeds have all three 13s on top, easy to get to. The fourth one's just super annoying. Um, I mean, the third one's really annoying. But as long as you have these uh, three unbolted and the whole linkage removed, it should give you the ability to pretty much have it all loosey-goosey like this. And then we're going to unbolt the box right now and drop everything out. All right, guys. So I know you're not going to be able to see this very well, but here's the box. We're about to pull the, the, the last bolt off right here. As we unbolt it by hand. All right, Lon, you can let go of it slowly. Now, can you pull it back more enough? No, 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 not, not that. Um, yeah, like that, yeah, there you go. No? There we go. Now, put the, the boot side kind of like tall ways, like, no, no, stand it up, like the boot stand it, like. There you go, there you go. Perfect. And that's everybody, is how you pull out a freaking shift box out of a Mark IV with a six-speed transmission. <laughs> it's so annoying. It's so much work. Hey, Lon. <laughs> Here you go. Where are you? Huh? <laughs> All right. All right, that does not taste very good. All right, so we're here. So the next step here is once you got your box out is to pry open your box pretty much. You get all these little tabs here. Just work your way around the entire box. And then we're gonna open the bottom. So we'll show you guys in just a second. All right, so covers off. Um, this is why we have to replace it. You guys can see nice, nice little bits. The uh, shift link is just legitimately just exploded in the car, uh, in the box. Um, we lucked out. We did not lose the little clip. This little clip, if you don't have it, you won't be able to do this job pretty much. Now you'll see here, this is the original linkage. And this linkage, you'll see it's all metal. These plastic pieces surround the metal piece. And that's what holds it in place. It's pretty much a bushing. Um, and now there's these metal clips down here that hold this in place. Just like that. And pull this whole linkage out. You see here, this is the clip that we're talking about. Be very careful with these guys. Don't damage them. These are super hard to get a hold of uh, locally. Um, so we're going to remove that one and then we're going to remove, I'm going to grab this one just so I don't drag his yeah. thing down. And then we're going to go over here and same process, pull this guy off. Oop. And it went all the way over there. <laughs> and then this is the link, the original linkage that we're pulling off. Reverse the process. Pop this in. Now orientation does matter on these guys you want the clip facing out this way not towards the body um, i'll show you guys a little, a little bit closer when i get to that see 
guys can see this really quick. See, the clip is facing out this way. Don't turn it the other way around because it won't fit, number one, but just don't try to jam it in there. That's how it goes in. And now we're back at the box. Now, same thing, feed it through. The old clip. Just like that. You grab your shift linkage, and then you gotta pop this on. This is where it becomes annoying. Do you have any grease by chance? Mm -hmm. but oh, you actually got some right here. Barbaco, eh? <laughs> Got some of the old stuff in here. Um, if you guys don't have any grease, go to the auto store and get white lithium grease. Is what you need to use for this stuff. C clip on or clip I don't know the actual term for these clips but um, that's it guys so um, we're gonna put it all back together but I want to give you guys a heads up once you have this all put back together and you put it back in the car it's not going to work right off the bat you're gonna have to readjust all your shift linkage because we have to remove the ends to get this out of the car um, so remember uh, all your orientation original orientation and your new ones because it's gonna matter a ton when you guys get the um, Box back in and you get the linkage back in the car because none of this is going to line up the way it was before uh, So there's a lot of adjustment you have to do you're gonna be I recommend having someone with you uh, When you guys get to the shift linkage portion portion Because you're gonna have to feel for the gears going in while someone keeps adjusting the linkage until all gears go in. Um, it, it, it's 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 sucky. I'm just giving you guys a heads up. <laughs> so we're back at this. Um, so you guys can see, we got the shift box back in place underneath. Uh, all we have now is just to put in the, uh, the the two bolts on top, and pretty much we're just reversing the entire process. So as long as you guys followed the entire process for uh, removing it, it's exactly the same way to installing it. So what we're going to show you guys when we're done with everything reverse is um, What's it called? Give me a second here is the adjustment for the shift linkage because there is a, a specific adjustment for this guy um, We're guys going to give you obviously a, a, a torque specification rundown like we do in all our videos So we'll do a full flyby on everything that we did so you guys know exactly what to take off and put back on just like at the end of all the videos So make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video so you guys can see the full flyby of everything that we've been doing Okay, so we'll show you guys uh, pretty much the next step when we get to that point. All right, everyone so adjusting shift linkage adjustment You have two spots for adjusting your shift linkage this guy this guy the one on the right is for Reverse the one on the left is for all your other gears now the trick here is how much uh, slack how much um, Forward and back movement that you need to adjust and this is where it becomes really really annoying Because the car has to be under load for the gears to come in correctly um, you can do this in pretty much when the car is stationary but until the car is actually under a load, in other words, you're moving, you won't be exactly 100% um, accurate on your uh, linkage adjustment. So the way it works is that these little guys have a spring. This spring, uh, you push back as far back as you can, and then this threaded portion will slide forward and back. Uh, that is pretty much your adjustment. You pretty much slide it a little bit back, a little bit forward, until the adjustment go until the car actually goes into gear that's that's your adjustment uh, once you get the gear in place let it go 
and then do the same thing on this side now reverse this guy right here is annoying because it's very the 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 adjustment is very very minimal and it's hard to find the sweet spot for it so you're going to be playing a lot for reverse uh first and second is the most important to get uh, going on this one because every every other gear will be correct after you get first and second in um mm -hmm. thank you so when we do the adjustment here we're going to move it back again it's a spring loaded so you'll see here um you're gonna squeeze it and then pull the threads in and out to do the adjustment um best way of doing this is having someone in the car you do the adjustment and then have them go into first and second gear and see if it goes into gear nicely if it does um pretty much take the car for a spin up and down the street make sure that it goes into first and second gear and then after that have them go into third and fourth and fifth accordingly since this is a six speed the sixth gear is a little bit more trickier to get going you might need to do adjustments on the reverse uh reverse i believe has um what's the word um has a i think an adjustment for six gear um, but i'm not 100 percent sure we're gonna find out in a little bit but again that is it that is the entirety of the adjustment every car will be different on how much thread that you have to move forward and back to get the linkage to be adjusted correctly and the reason for this if you look over here all these uh, shift linkage ends uh, are have a rubber bushing and these bushings uh, wear out so more adjustment might be needed uh, for the linkage to engage the gear um, a really good modification for these guys you can swap out these end links and get solid ones a nice uh, metal setup which will improve number one the feel of the shifting number two uh, ease of adjustments is so much better um, another thing you can uh, uh, use is upgrade the um, the bushings here as well to solid bushings that is an option from going to rubber to metal and that again also helps drastically on the feel of your shifter uh, you get more of a clunk so it has a nice shift uh, easier and smoother shift um, again it all depends on your setup and how you want to enjoy your drive personally i have the metal uh, bushings down here i'm actually getting ready to upgrade to the metal ends on these as well because i want the harder clunkier shift uh, especially when i'm driving uh doing doing some hard runs i prefer that like kind of like clunk uh and it's not grinding it's just it clicks better in um has a better feel also for shifting like you know where to find the gears as well um so that's it guys for for this uh part of the video uh, the next portion of the video is you guys are going to get a breakdown of everything. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. And this episode of Pinchy Al's Garage, uh, showing you guys how to pull your shift box and change out your shift linkage, or actually the main shift, uh, shift cable wire. Um, next time, we'll see what's uh, going to be going on next time. All right. Thanks again, everybody, and have a wonderful day. Peace out.